great hearts, boys and girls. The cat and hat here. And I am here today, I am here to remind you that even though we're at home, we all need to still live by our great hearts virtues. Remember our virtues? All right, I hope we, everybody remembers them. They're listed right here. Our great hearts virtues are responsibility, perseverance, integrity, honesty, courage, citizenship, humility, friendship, and wisdom. The virtue that we're going to be talking a lot about today is humility. I am going to be reading you two Dr. Seuss books, my author, and they're both about humility and being humble. Now, what is humility? Let's get a reminder here. Humility, we do not brag or compare ourselves to other. We always strive to do our best, whether we are recognized or not. That's humility. And these two stories will focus on that and show you how silly it is to brag about ourselves and how we need to be humble. So I hope you enjoy these books and you remember to be humble. The first book we're going to read is called The Sneetches by Dr. Seuss. Now the star belly sneetches had bellies with stars and the plain belly sneetches had none upon thars. Those stars weren't so big, they were really so small. You might think such a thing wouldn't matter at all. But because they had stars, all the star belly sneetches would brag, we're the best kind of sneetch on the beaches. With their snoots in the air, they would sniff and they'd snort. We'll have nothing to do with the plain belly sort. And whenever they met some, when they were out walking, they'd hike right on past them without even talking. When the star belly children went out to play ball, could a plain belly sneetch get in the game? Not at all. You could only play if your bellies had stars and plain belly children had none upon thars. When the star belly sneetches had frankfurter roast or picnics or parties or marshmallow toast. They never invited the plain belly sneetches. They left them out cold in the dark of the beaches. They kept them away, never let them come near, and that's how they treated them year after year. Then one day, it seems, while the plain belly sneetches were moping and doping alone on the beaches, just sitting there wishing their bellies had stars, a stranger zipped up in the strangest of cars. My friends, he announced in a voice clear, clear and keen. My name is Sylvester McMonkey McBean, and I've heard of your troubles. I've heard you're unhappy, but I can fix that. I'm the fix-it-up chappy. I've come here to help you. I have what you need. My prices are low. I work at great speed, and my work is 100% guaranteed. Then quickly, Sylvester McMonkey McBean put together a peculiar machine. And he said, you want stars like the star belly sneech? My friends, you can have them for $3 each. Just pay me your money and hop right aboard. So they clambered inside and the big machine roared. It clonked and it bonked and it jerked and it burked and it bopped them about, but the thing really worked. When the plain belly sneeches popped up out, they had stars, they actually did. They had stars upon stars. Then they yelled at the ones who had stars at the start we're exactly like you, you can't tell us apart. We're all the same, now you snooty old smarties, and now you can go, we can go to your Frankfurter parties. Good grief, groaned the ones who had stars at the first. We're still the best sneetches and they are the worst. But now how in the world will we know? They all frowned. And wit if which kind is what, or the other way around. Then up came McBean with a very sly wink, and he said, things are not quite as bad as you think. So you don't know who's who, that's perfectly true. But come with me, friends, do you know what I'll do? I'll make you, a, you again, the best beat sneetches on the beaches. And all it will cost you is $10 eaches. Belly stars are no longer in style, said McBean. What you need is a trip through my star off machine. This wondrous contraption will take off your stars so you don't look like sneetches who have them on ours. And that handy machine worked very precisely, removed all the stars from their tummies quite nicely. Then with the snoots in the air, they paraded about and they opened their beaks and they let out a shout. Now we know who is who. Now there isn't a doubt. The best kind of sneetches are sneetches without. Then of course those with stars got frightfully mad to be wearing the star now was frightfully bad. And of course, old Sylvester McMonkey Big Bean invited them into his star-off machine. Then of course, from then on, as you probably guess, 
things got really into a horrible mess. All the rest of the day on those wild screaming beaches, the fix it up chappy kept fixing up sneeches. Off again, on again, in again, out again. Through the machine they raced round and about again. Changing their stars every minute or two, they kept paying monkey, money they kept running through. Until neither the plane nor the star bellies knew whether this one was that one, or that one was this one, or which one was what one, or what one was who. Then when every last cent of their money was spent, the fix it up chappy packed up and he went. And he laughed as he drove in his car up the beach. They will never learn. No, you can't teach a sneech. But McBean was quite wrong. I'm quite happy to say that the sneeches got really quite smart on that day. The day they decided that sneeches are sneeches and no kind of sneech is the best on the beaches. That day, all the sneeches forgot about stars and whether they had one or not upon the heart. The end. The next book we're going to read is also by Dr. Seuss and it's called The Big Brag. The rabbit felt mighty important that day on top of the hill in the sun where he lay. He felt so important up there on that hill that he started in bragging as animals will. And he boasted out loud and he threw out his chest of all the beasts in the world, I am the best. On land and on sea and even up in the sky, no animal lives who's better than I. What's that, growled a voice that was terribly gruff. Now why do you say such ridiculous stuff? The rabbit looked down and he saw a big bear. I'm the best of the beasts, said the bear, and so there. You're not, snapped the rabbit. I'm better than you. Poos, the bear snorted. Again, I say poo. You talk mighty big, Mr. Rabbit, that's true. But how can you prove it? Just what can you do? Hmm, thought the rabbit. Now what can I do? He thought and he thought and he finally said, Mr. Bear, do you see these two ears on my head? My ears are so keen and so sharp and so fine, no ears in the world can hurt here further than mine. Humph, the bear grunted and he looked at each ear. You say they are good, said the bear with a sneer, but how do I know just how far they can hear? I'll prove, said the rabbit, my ears are the best. You sit there and watch me, I'll prove it by test. He sniffed, stiffened the ears till they both stood up high and he and pointed straight up at the blue of the sky. He stretched his ears open as wide as he could. Shh, I'm listening, he said as he stood. He listened so hard that his ears started to sweat and the fur on his ears and his forehead got wet. For seven long minutes he stood, then he stirred. Then he said to the bear, do you know what I heard? Do you see that far mountain? It's 90 miles off. There's a fly on that mountain. I just heard him cough. Now the cough of a fly, sir, is quite hard to hear when it's 90 miles off, but I heard it quite clear. So you see, bragged the rabbit, it's perfectly true that my ears are the best, so I'm better than you. The bear for a moment just sulked as he sat, for he knew that his ears couldn't hear things like that. This rabbit, he thought, made a fool out of me. Now I've got to prove that I'm better than he. So he said to the rabbit, you hear pretty well. You can hear 90 miles, but how far can you smell? I'm the greatest of smellers, he bragged. See my nose? This nose on my face is the finest that grows. My nose can smell anything, both far and near. With my nose, I can smell twice as far as you hear. You can't, snapped the rabbit. I can, growled the bear, and he stuck his big nose way up high in the air. He wiggled that nose, and he sniffed, and he snuffed. He waggled that nose, and he whiffed, and he whuffed. For more than ten minutes, he snuffed, and he snuffed, and then he said to the rabbit, I've smelled far enough. All right, said the rabbit, come on and tell exactly how far is the smell that you smell. Oh, I'm smelling very far smell, said the bear, bear, way past that fly on the mountain out there. I'm smelling past many great mountains beyond, 600 miles more to the edge of a pond. And way, way out there by the pond you can't see is a very small farm on the farm is a tree. On the tree is a branch, on the branch is a nest, a very small nest where two tiny legs rest. Two hummingbird eggs, only half an inch long, but my nose, said the bear, is so wonderfully strong. My nose is so good that I smelled without fail that the egg on the left is a little bit stale. 
and that is a thing that no rabbit can do. So you see, the bear boasted, I'm better than you. My smell are so keen that it just can't be beat. What's that? called a voice from way down by his feet. The bear and the rabbit looked down at the sound and they saw an old worm crawling out of the ground. Now, boys, said the worm, you've been bragging a lot. You both think you're great, but I think you're not. You're not half as good as a fellow like me. You hear and you smell, but how far can you see? Now I'm here to prove to you big boasting guys that your nose and your ears aren't as good as my eyes. And the little old worm cocked his head to one side and he opened his eyes and he opened them wide. And he looked far away with a strange sort of, sort of stare as if they were burning two holes in the air. The eyes of the, that worm almost popped from his head as he stared half an hour to his eyelids got red. That's enough, growled the bear. Tell the rabbit and me, how far did you look and just what did you see? Well, boys, the worm answered, that look that I took was a look that looked further than you'll ever look. I look across the ocean, way out to Japan, for I can see further than anyone can. There's no one on earth who has eyesight that's finer. I looked past Japan, then I looked across China. I looked across Egypt and took a quick glance across the two countries of Holland and France. Then I looked across England and also Brazil, but I didn't stop there. I looked much further still. And I kept right on looking and looking until I looked around the world and right back to this hill. And I saw on this hill, since my eyesight's so keen, the two biggest fools that have ever been seen. And those, the fools that I saw, I saw were none other than you, who seem to have nothing better to do than to sit here and argue who's better than who. Then the little old worm gave his head a small jerk and he dived in his hole and went back to his work. The end. Hey boys and girls, it's Miss Sender here and um, we hope you enjoyed the two books about being humble and to remind us to be humble, we're gonna make this cute little inchworm here that you see that can crawl along on the ground, right? To make our inchworm, we need a white paper, we need colored paper if you have it, if not, use white paper all for the whole thing, scotch tape, a pair of scissors, a black marker, a glue stick, and either two skewers that are like used for shish kebabs, or you could use two um, straws or two popsicle sticks, whatever you might have. So to make our little inchworm, first thing we do is we take our paper and we cut it a strip out the long way. So the strip of paper that we cut out will be about an inch and a half thick like this. So once we cut it out, it will look a lot like this. All right, so it's gonna look like this. And then what we need to do is take our scissors and we need to cut the corners of each end off because one end's gonna be the head and one other end is gonna be the tail. And so we just cut the little corners off and then it's rounded on both ends. Once we've cut it off, we're going to lay it down on the, on the table and we're going to fold over one end about this wide here to be the head. And then we're going to fold it back over the other way, not quite as far as the head, and we're going to create, um, fold it accordion style the whole rest of the way. So when you end up at the end, you're gonna have one end being the head, one end being the tail, and accordion folds in the middle, All right? Then you're gonna take your white paper and you're going to draw two eyeballs on it with your marker, and you're gonna take your scissors and you're gonna cut out those eyeballs with your scissors. Once you've cut them out, you're going to glue them on your face, just like this guy, you'll glue them here. And you can take your marker and you can draw a mouth if you'd like. Then once you've done that, you're gonna turn your worm over. You're gonna take a piece of tape and the first skewer and you're going to place it on the near the fold, the first fold by the head, and you're gonna tape it down. And then you're gonna take another piece of tape, your second skewer, and you're going to put it by the crease by the tail, the fold by the tail there, and tape that one down. So that when we turn it back over, we will have our worm. Therefore, the end product looks like this, and our little worm can crawl along and remind you to be humble. 
So please, boys and girls, don't brag. Be humble. Have a great day. It's Miss Sendra and the Cat in the Hat saying goodbye for today.